What transmission is better off-road? Is it the automatic or the manual? Well, the debate rages, we know that, but today we're going to try and give you some information that helps you work out what's going to suit you, especially if you're looking to buy your next four-wheel drive. So today, I've got my mate Lucas, who is a very competent four-wheel driver, and we've got two four-wheel drives. We've got the 105 over here, which is manual, and the Ranger, which is automatic. Now, Lucas, what are we gonna do with these two vehicles? Mate, I'm super excited. We're gonna do uphills, downhills, wombat holes, rock climbing, rock crawling. Like, it's just gonna be crazy, and it's gonna be a really good test just to show you the difference between auto, manual, and what's better for you. That's exactly it. So what we're going to do is we're going to dr both drive both vehicles, and then after we've done that, we're gonna to come to you and give you a score. At the end of the video, we're gonna see the tally, and that's gonna be determining it. Now, obviously, there's lots of different things about these vehicles. We're not going to be critiquing or talking about that. We're not testing highways, we're not testing towing, we're not doing all that sort of stuff. This is just purely off-road, ability in an auto or a manual full drive and what's better. All right, let's go and uh, do the first thing. <laughs> let's get into it. <laughs> so we've just done the hill climb. It was an interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the climb is what, scrabbly, got some wombat holes in there, like yep. opposing holes, yeah, it's um, loose. a bit of loose rock on there. So what did you think, Lucas? What was your feelings on that? Both very, very confident, very happy with the transmission, the way they perform. Um, very, very hard to separate the two. Uh, one area that I would like to say is a big difference, manual versus auto. If you happen to stall on the hill, which didn't happen to us today. No. But if you stalled on the hill, to get started again with the manual, it's gonna be very, very difficult. You know, wheel traction, speed, all that stuff. Yeah. Whereas the auto, you can you can roll the throttle in and- Well, you're not gonna stall an auto on No, but if you, like yeah. you stop, but you can roll into it. As far as what we've just done, I think I would go for the auto, just okay. for that drivability in that situation. Yep. So I drove both the vehicles, because I wanted to try and make sure that the manual and auto performed as close as I could to focus on that. I set my engine RPM to about 2000 or just a tad over in both vehicles and just tried to hold that throttle response. And rather than coming to an obstacle and preempting it by loading on the throttle a little bit, I, I didn't do that. And um, so both of them felt like they had the same sort of speed going up the hill. And the auto though, when it got to the obstacles, it, the momentum, it lost the momentum, whereas yeah. the manual, kept its momentum. It might tire Scrabble a little bit more. I think that scrabbled a wee bit more than the auto did, but I lost a lot more momentum and, and then it would sort of gather it up and then we'd get over the obstacle and then get back to the momentum or the speed again and we'd carry on. Next to obstacle, it would slow up again. The manual didn't do that. So for me, and I didn't expect this, but I'm actually voting for manual <laughs> on the hill climbs. Yeah. I thought I was going to vote auto, but yeah. there you go. I think the manual, I'd agree with you. I think the manual takes it. Right. But to have the, the flip side where you have a bit more of a, you know, loss of traction or what have you, it'd be a lot easier to roll into the throttle on an auto on a hill like this than yes. it would be for the manual. But in this, in this drive today, the manual took it. Yep. Let's go and do the next one. Righto. All right, Lucas, let's have a go at going down a hill. And I think this is the perfect candidate, mate. It's a bit bit loose, a couple yep. little holes, so it'll be a really good test. All right. The uh, auto versus the manual transmission. It will be. Let's do it. <laughs> let's get in. <laughs> Well, hill descent, mate. What do you reckon? Hey, it is an open and shut case for me. Yeah? The manual took it <laughs> all the way, like yeah. 100%. First gear, like scrabbling down, you know, as it, it was a, down. It was a, it's a scrabbly climb. Yep, uh, wombat hole, so, um, but handled it with 100% confidence. Had to flutter the brake pedal a little bit. Might as, might as well have put this in neutral. You know, it was all about braking and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, modern cars have hill descent control and all that stuff, but... We're not using that. No, nah, we're just auto versus manual. Without yeah. the technologies, yeah. the manual just yeah. nailed it. 
and, and I think I came to the same conclusion. The auto for me just had no engine braking worth talking about. Yep. And, and I thought, and I actually had that same thought as I was coming down the hill of like, I may as well be in neutral because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm that hard on the brake. And the trouble with that is you then have tyres skidding and losing control and losing traction. Whereas with the manual, it, it, it always had traction and because the tyres are rotating the whole time. They're not allowing, they're not skidding mm. because you've got that brake pedal on. So yeah, once again, the manual gets the vote for me. Yeah, 100% for me as well. Let's go and do rocks. Well, that was interesting, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know what you did, but because the Land Cruiser's low gear, like it's got a ratio now in the transfer case. So first is really low. And I was thinking to myself, I wanted to try and make the Land Cruiser behave a little bit more like the gearing of the automatic. Okay, so trying to do that. So I drove that in second low. Mm. Did you do something? I did exactly the same. Oh, did you? Just to make it even Stevens and fair. Great, great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, okay. It made it really difficult to drive. I agree. Like, I found the Land Cruiser really tough. It was a handful. On yes. The, you know, getting the pedals and, yes. you know, it was, it was a handful. Yeah. So I, I, my first attempt, I came up, the rocks were slippery for me because we'd already driven it twice. But not that that really matters. But it, I came up, I didn't get up. And so I had to get off the power clutch in to roll back. With the auto, I could just apply the brake. Mm. And then very controlled, lowered myself back down, and I was still in drive, lowered myself back down for my, set, uh, my, my further attempts. Because even with the auto, I didn't one-shot it. Mm. I had to have a couple of goes. And so d having that control with the auto was really nice. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think like a, a massive difference between the manual and the auto, in my opinion, is when you bump these steps in the manual, like you've got, because you're on this sort of terrain, you're already, you know, you've got your foot on the clutch ready to go. Yes. So you bump into these and you, and all of a sudden you bump the throttle or you bump the clutch and you, you know, like it's very jolty and you're very, ugh, ugh, you know, trying to climb over it. Whereas with the auto, you nailed it by saying you cover the brake, and you just roll the throttle in nice and smooth and, the, and it's just so controlled and you can you can focus on picking your line. You don't have to focus on driving the car. Right, you just yes. focus on where, you, where you're going. So yep. yeah, the auto for me was the hands down winner in this scenario. Yeah, I, yeah it, it was chalk and cheese as far as I'm concerned. There's so much bad about the manual on this climb in this situation. Mm. Auto every day of the week for me. So auto's getting my vote. Well, Matt, this is the hill that I was talking about, mate, and I've chosen this one for a number of reasons. Yeah. It's loose, it's shaley, it's got some rock hop steps, it's got some good um, bold attraction there. Yep. You know, there's loose rocks, it's got a bit of an angle to it, like it's gonna be a really good test to push the manual transmission and the auto transmission yep. all in one place. Yeah, I can see that because my suspicion is just looking at the way, you know, we've got a wheel spin hole there, wheel spin hole here. You can see that people are struggling on that climb there. So there's a, there's, it's not the sort of thing you can just send it. No. Not that, the, not that we advocate that <laughs> style of driving, but you, you, you got to actually, well, you've got to have that throttle control dialed in. You've got to pick your line. It's going to be actually really interesting to see. Um, yeah, I, let's go and drive it and see what happens. But I think it's going to be really interesting seeing the two vehicles handling this differently. Mm, agreed. And there's not a lot of line choice. So, there, no. you know, you're sort of in there and it's all about the transmission you, doing its thing. You could try and straddle this hole, but you're not going to hold it very well. Uh, no. Nah. Yeah, not with the t tyres and the vehicles we've got. So I think we're best off just staying on the line that's there. Anyway, let's go and See try it. <laughs> Well, 
Well, that wasn't as technical as I was thinking, but I, I think it still gave us a sense of Auto V manual. So where's that at for you? What, what's your takeaway? Slippery granite and... Well, it was, it's, it's a hard one because the manual transmission had so much weight over the tyres, which you alluded to there before. Right. Um, so you had so much traction and ground pressure on, and stuff yeah. on that back wheel with the rear locker. Yeah. Mate, I've got a confession. Oh, what's that? When I done it, I didn't realise the front locker switch was on. So when I put the, lo the rear locker on, I went up at twin locks. So. Cheat! So. Actually, no, actually, actually, no, I'm okay with that. Because I drove it rear locked only, and I reckon my drive was just about as good as yours. Yeah, it was pretty close, mate. And I'll tell you... All right. <coughs> but transmission-wise? I had, a, I, I had the, um, the privilege there in the auto, and I picked a bit of an ordinary line, or I slipped off the line, or what have you, and it was a really, really good um, example of if you're in that situation with the manual, that clutch control again, and you know, trying to, mm. it was just so smooth and just rolling the power on and, and worrying about where the yep. wheels are pointing rather than a yep. lot going on. There was yep. so much less to think about. So, yep. really impressed with the auto on the climb and the slippery stuff and all yeah. that. Yeah. And look, I think that's, that's interesting you say that because. For me, yes, this vehicle drove the climb better, but we're not talking about that no. because we can't compare the two vehicles at that level. But from a control point of view, when I drove with the, with the auto, yep. I, I came in and it struggled and I was able to stay on the power because I was driving through the brake, so I had the two things going on and I was able to let it fall back a bit, which allows me just to change the steering lock the tiniest bit on the, on the reverse. Mm and then drive into the traction and, and the mu you can feel the traction starting to break but you don't wheel spin and you go that's working keep following it no it's not working do something different mm. so that's getting my vote on this climb yeah. is the auto because of that control is absolutely that, that, absolutely 100 percent yep. you and i got to start disagreeing somewhere along the line <laughs> Well, the first thing I can disagree with you, Matt, is you drive a Toyota, but that's not what today's about. <laughs> no. Last, we've got um, something you've cooked up for us. Now, what, shall we, we'll head over there, but what is it? Well, I don't want to tell you. Okay. I just want to take you because I don't want you to go, we're not going in there, that's madness. <laughs> right, I'm probably But I'll tell you what, it's going to be a really, really good test. It's, it's a bit flatter terrain. Yep. But it's, you know, it's got some highs, some lows, some ups and okay. downs, a bit of water, a bit of rock. So are we going to see it? I'd like to see load change. Where 100%. You... Okay, cool. 100%. Let's go and do that. Righto, let's go. Yeah, Lucas, this is going to be good. I like it. And what I like about it is the load is going to change the whole time. And the moment I go through, the rocks are going to be wet and they're going to be slippery. So it's going to come down to multiple things, I reckon, uh, not having driven it yet, but we're going to have control where we want to lower and raise ourselves over an obstacle. And then there's going to be other moments where we want to pop it. Yep. So a blip of the throttle. So that, that responsiveness is going to be important. Um, and then I want to try and straddle that gorge there, which is a bit of side <laughs> angle, a little of bit of fun. Of course you do. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> so well, as I said before, mate, I brought you here because I think this is the ultimate test you know, yeah. to uh, put both these transmissions through. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they go. All right. Well, let, let's uh, let's drive it and see what happens, eh? Hey? You're on.
mate. That was, um, aside from being an awful lot of fun, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, what, what, what do you reckon? Well, two different experiences altogether. Obviously, very different. Manual and auto, like, disregard everything else to do with the cars, focus on the transmission. Very, very different drive. Yes. I have a lot of confidence when I was in the auto, just for rolling on the power, like we've said before. Um, especially when you, you, you know, you get that jolt and you can roll through it and yeah. the, tr the torque converter takes a little bit of that, that bang and that jolt and everything out of it. Yeah. So you, it just feels like a much smoother and a much more controlled drive. And yeah. you're not getting that instant little bit of wheel spin when you're hitting those jolts and the back of the car shifts into a lower point and you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So auto transmission was fantastic. The manual transmission was, it got the job done, but it yeah. was, you know, when you when you get those bumps and those jolts and, you know, especially with the wet, wet rocks, the back of the car seemed to change track and change direction and, you know, so it just didn't have the confidence that the automatic did. So, yeah. for me, the automatic, hands down, again, yeah. in the rocks and the slippery stuff. I think for me as well, I, I, I came to a similar conclusion. I felt like I was beating on my, my Land Cruiser and I was trying not to. Like I didn't want to do that, I wanted to do a very controlled drive. So I was on idle, so much so I think Nick, the cameraman, he got he got me stalling it. You know, like you know <laughs> Good job I, Nick. <laughs> I, you know, I was I was trying to go that slow. Yeah. And you know, but I didn't want to, you know, upset the traction and that, so I was letting it come down on idle and you know, but it stalls. Mm. So then you've got to do a start. And, and you know, it's all of that that goes on with the manual. And then when I was coming out of this last section here, you know, she was scraping and banging and that was all on idle. So going as slow as I could, whereas with the auto, when I came in this section, you drove it better than I did. You got a much better line. But the line I picked, you could feel the car contacting things, but it was a con very controlled, like I could just feed the power on, drive through the brakes, and you could feel, no, that's okay, you know, we're just, that's a diff slide, and whatever it was, you could, you knew whether you were hurting the car or not, and whether you can had to change tact. So, yes, automatic for me in the rocks. Yeah. So let's draw our little experiment to a close, shall we? We'll. Uh, We'll get Mrs. Mad Matt to give us the final tally because I've pretty much forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having too much fun. <laughs> um, I know that we've pretty much agreed on everything, and that's like that's a world's first. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let, what what have we got there? At the end of the day, you buy the vehicle that you want to buy. This is just to help you make that decision. Maybe we could say something like this. If you want your four wheel drive to do this sort of technical, more challenging, rocky, bumpy sort of terrain, go for the auto. If you're doing hills, because I think the manuals did well going up and down hills, if I recall the test correctly. Downhills, the manual was awesome. Ah, oh, brilliant, yeah. and if. If you then threw in a diesel manual, like that's petrol, with a diesel and you were doing descents, you get even more engine braking, so even more control on those descents, eh? Absolutely. Yeah. Obviously, if you've got hill to sand and all the fancy electronics and the computer doing the driving for you, well, that's one thing. We've tried to stay clear of all of that today and just keep it down to Auto V manual. Any comments to wrap this up from you, Lucas? So, for those that are looking at buying a full drive, to use it as a full drive, I, my personal opinion is, if you're a beginner four-wheel drive and you're just getting into the off-road you know, circuit and you, and you just want to go out and have a bit of safe fun where you're not going to beat on your car and all that sort of stuff, an auto is the way to go. Yep. Just simply for that control. Yep. And obviously, as you said, which we're not testing today, but with the hill descent control and all that sort of stuff that's on modern cars today, the, 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 the great you know, thing that the, the manual had of descending down a hill well you can have that in an auto as well yeah. so yep. if you if you're looking at going forward driving and you're a starter definitely an auto if you've got a bit of experience behind your belt and you don't mind cog swapping with a manual <laughs> yeah. absolutely a manual's yeah. a lot of fun yeah um but yeah auto yep. for me mate all the way yep i think i'm i'm going to agree with you on that so lucas tell us a little bit about the springs 4x4 park mate this is your place your playground Mate, it's four drivers heaven. You can come here in a standard car, 
a modified car, you know, there's wildlife, there's modern facilities, flush toilets, hot showers for all the ladies out there so you can have a comfortable stay. And the views from our highest point in the park are absolutely epic. So, they are good. Yeah, you've got to get down here and check it out, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. And look, thanks very much for having a park like this because four-wheel driving these days is getting harder and harder to do in public places. So private four-wheel drive parks like this just allow us to really push our vehicles to the limits. And within reason, Lucas is happy for you to come out here and really test your vehicles out. He's got some pretty nasty country. <laughs> I think we took took our Jeep up hardcore climb and well, yeah, that was that, pretty hardcore. Mate. That was hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, look, it, we've done another video, which is high range versus low range. What are they for? What are the benefits and the, and the disadvantages of both of those? When would you use them? When would you not? That's going to be linked above. I'm Mad Matt. That's Lucas. Stay safe on the trail.